So Bitcoin, in essence, becomes the first uh, digital monetary network. It's the Facebook of money because it's on one hand, it's a it's a synthetic safe haven asset. It's an in, it's like pharmaceutical grade gold. It's like it's like all the gold, none of the hangover, all the good parts of gold, but none of the bad problems with gold. And it's sitting on a big tech network like Facebook or Google, and you can plug into it. Like no one's ever going to plug gold into an iPhone. You're not going to like punch a button and buy 10 bars of gold on the iPhone. But PayPal and Square have plugged Bitcoin into the iPhone. So Bitcoin is programmable, uh, programmable synthetic gold. I, I think that the big challenge every investor, every person on earth has right now, all 7.8 billion people and all $300 trillion worth of investments, their big problem is where's my store of value? And, and um, in a world where if I double the amount of currency, but I keep the assets and the goods and services constant, then that means everything has to go up by a factor of two, right? So in a world where you're expanding the money supply, it's like, it's like uh, expanding the, the uh, dropping the air pressure. As you go up, in altitude, the air pressure's dropping, oxygen's falling out of solution, the heat is falling out of the air, you're going to freeze to death or suffocate. It's called adiabatic lapse in aeronautics, but it's like climbing a mountain or going up in an airplane. We're sucking the oxygen out of the room and the oxygen in the, in, in the monetary system is monetary energy. So everybody needs to find a store of value. And a lot of people are using Tesla as that store of value because they have more faith in Tesla stock and Tesla than they have faith in the federal government and this, you know, the Federal Reserve and the central banks because their view is, you know, there's, there's something I can, I can count there. A lot of people are using Apple and Amazon as stores of value. Other people stampeded into gold. That's why gold traded up after March. Or in yeah. Time frame. And, and they say people are crazy, but I'm like, I've never held cash. I've always been fully invested in technology equities because I'm like, we're in the era of hyper change. You know, Tesla's electric propulsion technology is has a tremendous value that's increasing every year as they make it better. Uh, but but I also wanted to step back with with micro strategy. So you told us the story. You're, you're at this point of like, OK, our cash is melting. We're generating a ton of cash flow from the business. How do you go from like, OK, Bitcoin, something to consider to like actually putting the money in? I'm at like your auditors, your board of directors. They must have been a pain in the ass about this. I'm so curious about like how you actually kind of executed yeah, so, this. Well, so we've got the 500 million in cash and then we realize we're going to lose all the money if we do nothing. Like it's going to be worthless. It's going to, if, if I take away 50, if I burn 15% of it a year, how many years are you going to wait until you burned it all before you conclude that that's a problem, right? So, and, and that's very clear. So we've got a problem starting in March that's very obvious. Small problem and it became a big problem. And so the first thing to do is figure out what to do with it. So we went through real estate and stocks and bonds, but our conclusion is the only, the only uh, bonds are gonna hold value have to yield more than 15% coupon. <laughs> Otherwise you have to keep lowering interest rates. So if interest rates aren't gonna go negative, then the coupon's not gonna cover the inflation loss and therefore a bond won't hold value. With real estate, it's the same issue. How are you gonna grow your rents faster than 15%? Not easy. So then you go to stocks. So which stocks? Well, you better find, you know, you better buy a super high growth, like a Tesla, Amazon. It has to be some on fire, big tech, massive screaming growth company because otherwise you can't stay ahead of the 15% hurdle rate. So that's why Tesla kind of works. That's why all of the, you know, the other bond and the other stocks, they sort of start to drift up. But over the next five years, unless you believe the company can grow its cash flows greater than 15 percent a year, it's going to fall behind and it won't hold value. So then you go to scarce assets that aren't correlated to cash flows uh, of U.S. dollar currency. So that gets you to gold or silver. Well, the problem with gold is that gold miners produce 2% more gold every year. So there's a built-in 2% inflation rate in gold. And then it's centralized, it's corruptible, and you can print more gold derivatives and that drives the price down. 
And ultimately, the big problem with gold is if the price of gold goes up by a factor of 10, the gold miners and the, and the derivatives producers are going to create more gold, and that's going to keep a cap on the price. So how do I find something which is ultimately scarce that feels like gold that you can't create any more of? And that's where you find a crypto. And if you, if you basically designed a crypto network that was 21 million gold coins, and you couldn't produce any more, and then you could audit it every 10 minutes, and then if you convinced $350 billion worth of money to buy into that network, you would have Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, in essence, becomes the first uh, digital monetary network. It's the Facebook of money, because it's, on one hand, it's a, it's a synthetic safe haven asset. It's, an in, it's like pharmaceutical grade gold. It's like, it's like all the gold, none of the hangover, all the good parts of gold, but none of the bad problems with gold. And it's sitting on a big tech network like Facebook or Google, and you can plug into it. Like no one's ever going to plug gold into an iPhone. You're not going to like punch a button and buy 10 bars of gold on the iPhone. But PayPal and Square have plugged Bitcoin into the iPhone. So Bitcoin is programmable, uh, programmable synthetic gold. And if you're trying to find something that is scarce, that's going to float on the pool of liquidity as the Federal Reserve and the EU's central bank print more money, then Bitcoin is that something because you can't make any more of it. You can program it. And then, by the way, the, the answer is a crypto asset network. The issue is why not one of the other 10,000? Will it be copied? Will it be banned? Or will it be uh, hacked? And Bitcoin is at the point where it hasn't been hacked in 12 years. It's been copied 10,000 times, but it's the winner. So you pick, you know, it's like not Friendster, it's not MySpace, it's not Yahoo or AOL, it's the Facebook or the Google. You got to pick the winner. Once something is hundreds of billions of dollars and 20 times bigger than the next like kind thing, then it's the winner. And it's clear it's not going to be banned. It's built into PayPal and Square. There's a senator, there's a Congress, a congressional caucus. It's been adopted and regularized. And, 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 and it's been adopted by the SEC and the IRS as property. So you got what you've got is you've got crypto asset gold network for the 21st century as a store of value. That's why we adopted it. And it seems like a no brainer when you explain it like that. So eloquent. That was awesome. And a couple things you said that were fascinating is like I, some people call it like the most successful economic experiment in history, which is something I love because it's like, oh, is it working? Is it not? Bitcoin's a scam. It's like scam or not. They're moving billions of dollars a day on this network and it's growing. Like this is they're moving more money than PayPal. Like this is, you know, a huge force <clears throat> in, the, in the network. And Square and Cash App to me is one of the most fascinating things, reasons why I'm bullish because you have 33 million accounts on Cash App bring 80% a year. Jack Dorsey loves Bitcoin, is given every single one of them a tool to buy Bitcoin, incentive to buy it with one click. He's trying to get out of Visa and MasterCard, taking 2.9% on every transaction, going to build a layer two solution. Like, I don't know. I feel like there's so much excitement with the Jack Dorsey uh, Cash App thing. I'm curious if you have any thoughts on that. I do. Well, first of all, if, if, if I put a bank account on a mobile phone like cash, then I've got free checking, magic bank account. If I plug it into Bitcoin, I have a savings account in cyberspace run by incorruptible software that yields 100% interest tax free. Who doesn't want that? Like for the last decade, Bitcoin has been appreciating 100% versus the dollar. And if you just put the money into the Bitcoin savings account, then and you don't sell it you're basically getting it to appreciate tax-free so how many banks will give you a hundred percent tax-free savings accounts not many right so pretty compelling idea right and the other compelling the other observation is they sold like 1.6 billion dollars worth of bitcoin in the third quarter and that's up a hundred percent over the second quarter and that's up a thousand one hundred percent so when something's growing a thousand percent year over year and it's doubling every quarter, that's the world's way of giving you a wake up call, telling you this is high growth. And by the way, why wouldn't you? I'm giving you a hundred percent tax free savings account. Your choice is keep it in cash, get zero percent interest, and the value, the, the wealth is going to be cut in half in 36 months. So it's not a hard decision. 
once you understand what's going on, it's utterly compelling.